Recently, I read a rather amusing article from the online apologist Anthony Rogers called The Trinity in the Old Testament. It's amusing because it's full of erroneous statements, arguments, conclusions based on faulty facts about the Hebrew language. He says in part that the doctrine of the Trinity is interwoven throughout the entire warp and woof of the Old Testament. It's not merely found in a discrete passage or proof text here and there. For example, from the beginning to the end of the Old Testament, plural nouns, pronouns, verbs, adverbs, and adjectives are regularly used for God, at least in the Hebrew text. And then Anthony Rogers provides the following list. The word Elohim is used thousands of times for God. Adonai is used hundreds of times for Lord. Both of these words are plural nouns in Hebrew. A number of passages speak of the faces or presences or persons of God. God refers to himself as us, our, and we. The Old Testament says of God, they caused me to wander, they appeared, they drew nigh, they went, and they judge. The Old Testament calls God our creators, makers, and husbands. The Old Testament says that God is holy, another plural. All of this and more can be found in the Old Testament in spite of the fact that singular words are readily available in each instance where these words occur. If the prophetic authors of the Bible were Unitarians, we wouldn't expect them to speak about God in this way. Indeed, Unitarians do not typically speak this way in ordinary conversation and fall all over themselves trying to explain them when they are brought up. Suffice it to say, when it comes to the Hebrew word for God, Elohim, we all know that Biblical Hebrew has many words that are plural in form but singular in meaning. No English translation that I know of would translate these words in the plural when used for the one God of Israel, also called Yahweh or Jehovah. When it comes to the word us of Genesis 1.26, Rogers claims that God refers to himself as us here. But a simple reading of the text in context will show that after this statement of let us make man in our own image, it goes on to say that God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created them, that is humanity, male and female, he created them. So clearly there, the us is not a reference to God himself, but God described as a he, singular personal pronoun, addressing someone else, others. The word biblical commentary says that it is now universally admitted that this was not what the plural meant to the original author. When angels do appear in the Old Testament, they are frequently described as men. And in fact, the use of the singular verb create in Genesis 1.27 does, in fact, suggest that God worked alone in the creation of mankind. Let us create man should therefore be regarded as a divine announcement to the heavenly court, drawing the angelic host's attention to the master stroke of creation, man. In Job 38, verses 4 and 7, puts it, When I laid the foundation of the earth, all the sons of God shouted for joy. Rogers also falsely claimed that the Old Testament says of God, for example, they caused me to wonder, they appeared. But again, the word biblical commentary on Genesis 20, verse 13, says that it is unusual that God here takes the plural verb, suggesting that God's might be a better translation. And this may represent an accommodation to Abimelech's polytheistic outlook. But the majority of commentators see the plural verb as an anomaly. Similarly, in Genesis 35, verse 7, the word biblical commentary says that the Greek has a singular verb here. In other words, the Jewish writers of the time understood it as saying God appeared to him. 
Roger's other example of 2 Samuel 7.23, where again the LXX renders the verse as a singular verb with objective third masculine pronoun. That is, who is like your people, Israel, whom God led him to pay a ransom for him for his people? And the parallel account in 1 Chronicles 17.21 uses a singular verb. In his conclusion, Anthony Rogers seems to miss the simple fact that there is no English translation that would translate the Hebrew in the sense of God being more than one person. For example, as gods or lords, as they, as creators, or as makers. Which begs the question whether Anthony Rogers would also accuse all English translators of being, quote, Unitarians. The desperation by so many self-professing apologists, pastors, and teachers in trying to prove that the one God of Israel with the singular personal name Yahweh or Jehovah is more than one person is defeated by the simple fact that tens of thousands of times singular personal pronouns and verbs are used for the one God of Israel. The few proof texts, verses, or words that are in desperation used to prove otherwise simply subverts the whole of the Bible revelation regarding our Creator, who Jesus calls the Father, the only true God in John 17, 3. The Hastings Dictionary of the Bible, the Old Testament, can scarcely be used as authority for the existence of distinctions within the Godhead. The New International Dictionary of New Testament Theology admits that the New Testament does not contain the developed doctrine of the Trinity. And the Encyclopedia of Religion and Ethics rightly says that at first, the Christian faith was not Trinitarian. It was not so in the apostolic and sub-apostolic ages as reflected in the New Testament and other early Christian writings.